So this is gonna sound really corny, but as long as I can remember, I've been an artist. I've been drawing since I was two years old. Started out on my mom's furniture. That's probably the earliest memory I have of uh, my art. I was drawing on this orange leather sofa that my mom had. <coughs> 70s baby, orange leather. Um, I used to go behind that because it was like my own little world when I got back there. I had a ballpoint pen and I was basically drawing a mural on the back of this piece of furniture. And uh, one day my mom went behind there to go clean up behind the sofa. And she saw all of the drawings on the back of the sofa and she immediately was like, yo, which, which one of y'all did this? And she was fussing at my oldest brother and one of my older cousins like, Byron, did you do this? My brother. And Leo, my cousin, did, one of y'all did this? And he was like, no, we didn't do it. And I'm sitting there like, I did it, I did it. And my mom refused to believe that it was me. And finally, um, I was just like, yeah, it was me, mom. It was me. And she was like, no, 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 there's no way you did this. She said, well, if you did this, draw me another one. Cause I had like sparrows and birds and stuff like that. Cause I was always like paying attention and observing to the surrounding uh, environment that I was in. And I was heavy into like, the natural world because we used to go fishing and stuff like that all the time so this time i drew like a, a bird pulling a worm out of the ground my mom's like oh my god you really did draw this this is really good go get a belt you know that kind of thing it was just like so I, I knew very early on i'd be making a lot of sacrifices for my art but um it, it's one of those things that like you you know early on whether or not you have a certain passion for something and when you find out that early, um, it, it makes it a little bit easier in life when you continue on in it because it's, it's almost second nature. Like art for me has always been something um, as effortless as breathing, but at the same token, I still take it seriously. You know, I, I don't, in, in knowing that I can, I can do something that is not everyone can just execute and do, I also understand the simple fact that art is also a discipline just like anything else. Anyone can learn to be an artist. It's just that I think the gift comes in that it's an, it's innate in me and it's something that I can do a little bit easier and I picked up on a lot faster than everybody else. And it was all because I was always focused on it. So, I mean, art is something that it'll never leave me. It'll never escape me as long as I nourish it. Like, you know, it's gonna always be there when I'm old and if I still have, you know, all my faculties and everything and my motor skills together, I can continue to create art well into my 80s and 90s. I, I mean, I know artists, artists, excuse me, that have done that. And um, it's just one of those things that I've always said that, you know, I used to have oldest brothers tell me all the time, what you gonna do, you gonna draw yourself a job? And I'd be like, I don't know what you mean by that, but that hurts to hear you say that. I was a cancer sensitive kid. And it wasn't until like I got to Xavier University, um, my dad, I wanted to be a marine biologist, so I was going biology something. And my dad was like, look, man, you've been drawing on all my furniture all your life. Why don't you just go ahead and submit uh, some artwork to um, Mr. Scott and see if you can get a scholarship to help with this tuition. Just so happened I did that and I wound up getting a scholarship. So it was kind of like I, I, I fell into this position of uh, the art world um, by happenstance because I'd always taken it for granted. I had never really taken the ability or the gift um, that seriously. So I wound up uh, getting a scholarship and started uh, working towards being an artist and everything like that. And from there, I also started working like my junior year into television production. And that got me into the whole TV world. But that was the most beautiful thing ever because it enabled me to still be creative and not rely solely on my art as a means of providing and feeding myself. Art is something that, um, it's a luxury, you know, for people to purchase art. People have to have the disposable income. Well, they don't have to, but it's, it's easier for people to purchase art when they have the disposable income to do so. So it's a luxury item. It's not a necessity, like food, you know, water, things of that nature. It's something that people have that'll appreciate over time. And um, in, in knowing that, I never wanted to put myself in a position where I'm working so hard as an artist to keep lights on and, and pay bills. 
because art, the art world works so funny, especially in this city. You'll see some artists and you're like, how did this person get wildly popular? It seems like that's something that I can do. And it's because they've established themselves as cultural icons within this city in the context of what they do. So when people see their work, they associate it with, oh, this is that guy, he's that great guy. Somebody put their finger on him a long time ago and said, this is the guy that does X, Y, Z. George Roderick is a perfect example. Um, the Blue Dog paintings. Those paintings are relatively easy to execute. But, you know, and, and for a trained artist, we can look at it and be like, man, that, I, I can do that with my eyes closed. But because he's such a cultural icon, he's transcended the ability uh, facet of being an artist, right? And it's more or less about what the image represents to people, how endearing it is, and how people feel when they see the blue dog, and how it makes them feel like home, and oh, that's a New Orleans thing. So, establish, establishing that cultural icon that he did with his work um, makes it a lot easier for him to just, you know, ascend to the heavens as far as his art career is uh, concerned. But, you know, one of the things that I learned early, well, I wouldn't say early on, but later in my career as an artist was that you got to share your gift if you want to um, if you want to get out there and actually start uh, having the universe open up to you. I lost all of my work in Katrina. I lost 17 years worth of art in Katrina. And that was probably the most beautiful thing that ever happened to me. Most people are like, oh, I can't believe you lost your art. And I'm like, no, man, that, that was actually phenomenal. I'm, it was a a great experience for me because it took about two years before I started painting again and it was always difficult because I wanted to recreate all of the stuff that I had all of those years and I could I just couldn't do it I was I didn't realize how emotionally connected I was to my work and finally I was dating a young lady out in uh, Gonzales where I was staying at at the time she was like you're a great artist won't you do something won't you paint something for me paint something that reminds me of your home and I did this piece and it was like a catharsis. It's like, oh man, I just, I really needed to get like back into this. And from there, I started like creating more pieces and uh, I started to really get out there and, and, and apply for festivals. And I did the uh, Gentilly Festival in 2008, I believe. It was the first, very first Gentilly Festival. And during that festival, the official poster artist, that just like opened up the universe to me and everyone else to know that I was an artist because prior to Katrina the only people that really knew I was an artist were like close friends and family that um that had my work you know I would I would meet people after when I really started like putting my work out there they were like man I didn't I didn't know you were an artist like that too I just thought you was a cool dude and everything you did television production and you started to realize like okay there's this other facet of me that hadn't been put in the forefront for so long and, and like it was almost like people were waiting for me to do it it's like as soon as I did that like so much work started coming my way and that's one of the things that I, I learned about just how the universe works if you just put yourself out there um, in whatever capacity it is creatively that that you derive the most uh, enjoyment or pleasure from with whatever's in line with your spirit if you're doing it you, you know it's right because you start losing track of space and time and everything and you get so immersed in it and everything and then the the universe kind of succumbs to your whims in regards to putting people and things in your life that are in alignment with whatever that that choice you've made that decision you made to focus on so I, I try to let people know that all the time we've all got this uh, tremendous amount of potential that's within us you know what I'm saying but if we don't nurture it and foster it it diminishes over time it's the same thing if if you have a plant you know what i'm saying if you don't water it it dies it, it withers away and it dies just just a simple principle or I, I ideal of watering a plant it's the same thing you can apply to your everyday life and your goals if you don't find a way to nurture whatever it is you're trying to achieve it'll never blossom into what you want it to be and we can you know I, i've told you this a bunch of times like don't kill what's happening right here in between your ears. Our thoughts are so powerful. Um, and we can create our own realities based on our thoughts. And it, it sounds kind of like, oh, sci-fi and crazy and off the wall, but it really is true. Um, for me, the, the way I perceive the world around me is I'm constantly taking part in creating this reality that I want for myself. 
align myself with people that are like-minded because I want like-minded people around me to make everything else work in accord with, with what I'm what I'm trying to achieve. You know, my dad used to tell me all the time, he's the sum total of the five closest friends you have. And, and at the time he was telling me that, I was doing a lot of knucklehead stuff, riding around in stolen cars, smoking weed and all of this other kind of stuff. I was really, really, I was like out there, like off the porch all the way and some other things I ain't gonna even mention. But when he said that to me, we were, we were fishing and I started thinking about it and I started thinking about what I really wanted out of life and what I really wanted for myself. And I started to think about what he meant by the sum total of the five closest friends. I started thinking about the cats I was running with at the time. And you know, these cats from the neighborhood that I, grew up with but they didn't have the same goals that I had they didn't say, have the same ambition or drive towards anything other than what they were doing in the moment and that's when I realized I gotta switch things up that don't mean you know I ain't got no love for them no more or anything like that it just means that like I, I really need to start changing the environment around me you know that would be more consistent and in line with what I want out of life and and that meant just like falling back a little bit with certain people and they 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 recognizing it and they understood it and respected it for what it was because they knew where they were and they knew they were comfortable doing what they were doing but they always knew like v you got talent bro you need to be doing something with it so it's one of those things and uh when you start doing that man when you start focusing more again i to go back with uh, on what i was saying earlier everything starts to fall in place for you people start coming into your life that they're there for a reason. There aren't any coincidences at all in any of this. Everything happens for a reason. It's no coincidence we're having this conversation right now. So art for me has always been something that's just been innate and I've found a way to foster it and, get, and give it the attention that it needs. You know, Picasso's got a great statement where he says that all children are born artists. The problem is how to remain an artist when we become adults. And that's the truth. I, I've never seen a, a kid that couldn't stand finger painting. You know what I'm saying? If you go in kindergarten class, they all enjoy it. So it, it's one of those things where if you, if you don't use it, you can potentially lose it. And the good thing about being in a city that's as culturally diverse and dynamic as New Orleans is, there's so much to pull from. I mean, this is a beautiful tapestry of just continuous threads of imaginative and creative people that form this 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 beautiful like tapestry of creativity and i'm blessed enough to say that i'm born and raised here i can trace my lineage back all the way to the early 1700s you know like my great 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 something grandmother like six times removed was a slave here and her papers were signed for freedom by governor galvez as a way of paying a debt of gratitude to her lover who was operating the cannons from it for him and uh, her slave master didn't want to honor the paperwork, so the governor himself came down and freed her. So knowing how connected I am to this city, <clears throat> that also like makes me feel like as an artist, when I'm doing my part in documenting the historical uh, individuals in this city, I, I feel like it's a right I have an obligation to capture people in, in a manner in which that they'll feel like that's how I would like to be remembered and immortalized on canvas. So it's always a fun thing for me, man. I've done a bunch of different festivals. I've done the, the French Quarter Festival. I was actually the first African-American to do the French Quarter Festival official uh, painting in uh, 2014. And in 32 years of that festival's existence, or 31 at the time, I can't remember. But uh, so that, that was a proud moment for me. It wasn't something that I was just like screaming for the top of the hills and everything like that. But at the end of the day, it, it did, um, it was a sobering thought to know that like, wow, man, it's 2014 and I'm, I'm the first, this is crazy. So it just goes to show you that there's still uh, plenty of walls that need to be broken down in regards to how like this, this art world works because in New Orleans, it's, it can be a bit divisive at times, you know? If you're an artist, you have to know that like, hey man, my audience will find me. I tell people that all the time, your audience will find you. You just have to be comfortable in your skin and what you're doing and not allow allow other people to set the bar for for you because like I've, I've been asked so many times, like why are you not out there in the French quarters with the rest of the artists doing stuff? And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm not out there because if you look at most of the art that's out there, those people are all painting the same thing. And the reason why they're doing that is because they want to see what's selling. 
their art is their way of eating and goes to the point what I was saying earlier was I never want to put myself in that position where I'm trying to keep the lights on and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I need to do what, what's going to sell as opposed to doing what I feel like is my best creative expression and what I, I, I derive enjoyment and pleasure out of because that way you if you're doing it the other way around you're letting other people set the bar for you and once they set the bar for you I mean, that's a wrap. You lose, you, you, you kill the creative kid that's inside of you. That little kid Picasso was talking about that you need to keep nurturing. You lose that because you allow other people to set the parameters for you. You just wait for other people to say, okay, this is working. And then you do that. There's no creativity in that at all. It's just a reproduction of whatever else is out there. So, I mean, that's kind of what it is for me. I, I derive all of my uh, inspiration from the people around me in this city. And... Um, I don't know what else I could tell you, man, but I, I just love what I do.